You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello and welcome. You are watching an episode of Random Fit with both myself, Ken Miller, and Miss Wendy Batts. Wendy, how you doing? Good to see you. I am great. How are you? I'm good. Well, let's let's dive into it um, with with <laughs> with well with this episode. You know, the the term routine is has been the word of the day, word of the week, word of the month uh, with me and my clients. So I don't know how many times the word routine, routine, routine has come up. And when we talk about working out and exercise. Um, one of the things that we always talk about is like, well, what's your routine? What's your what's your upper body routine? What's your lower body routine? But I think we need to look at that word routine and take a, a look at, OK, what is it? How, how does it work? How is it going to benefit me and my lifestyle? Because on this episode here with with Random Fit, we're talking about routine, uh, the not so life hack hack. Right. And. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because I had this conversation and, you know, my client, he just wants to give me the bottom line. What's the one thing that I can do to improve this goal? And I was like, dude, it's it's not one thing. It's it's a sequence of things, but it's also a sequence of things that you have to do on a regular basis to see a change in your life. Right. You, you have to you know, you're not just going to all of a sudden have a, a great day, a great week, because you decided to wake up early one day, mm-hmm. right? It's not just one day. It's it's what you do after you string days together, string weeks together, string months together. And so that that's where the idea came from. And that's where the, the conversations now I'm getting in the habit of saying, okay, well, what's your What's your routine? What's your morning routine? What's your evening routine? And not just about, okay, what is your workout routine? Right. And it's important because, you know, we all follow routine and we don't even think about it. And as you mentioned, if you look at the actual definition of what a routine is, it's a sequence of actions that are regularly followed, which then I'm like, well, what's the difference between a habit and actions? And like the habit itself is a a behavior that or an impulse that you do. So it's a behavior of something that you do unconsciously. It's something that you enjoy doing. And then a routine is when you take that one one habit and you make this into your routine where you just follow this like an internal clock. And like you said, your morning routine is super important, you know, and there's something, you know, there's there's different types of routine. And I didn't really know that you've got two different ones. You've got your um, intentional routine. And then you've got your automatic one. So, you know, when you're thinking about intentional, that makes sense. Those are the ones, things that you like to do. And I was like, what is the best morning routine? And, you know, if you start reading through a bunch of stuff, I started going down all kinds of rabbit holes there, Ken. And it's like, you know, (laughs) inspirational time for yourself, like morning podcasts, being creative, thinking, Mm -hmm. you know, I know in the morning, I'm probably the most creative throughout my entire day, right after I wake up or, you know, because by the end of the day, I'm so tired. And so apparently that that intentional morning routine is going to lead you throughout the rest of your day. Um, but I know I have my routine. I know exactly where I need to be. And internally, it's like, you know, clockwork. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say, you know, I'd like to say it's a routine for me. But like you, Wendy, you know, I'm I'm my freshest. My mind's the most clear when I wake up in the morning. Um, but you know, the way, and I'll do this maybe three, four days out of seven to where when I wake up, I'll actually wake up in, you know, with, with enough padding in my schedule that between the time that I open up my eyes and, and the first, I have to talk to somebody, whether it's my family or a client, um, hopefully I can build in 45, 60 minutes to where I'm getting in 10, 15 minutes of movement, right? That's you know, some floor bridges, um, you know, getting into, uh, you know, the world's greatest downward facing dogs, you know, uh, doing things like that to open up my hips, open up my shoulders. Um, and then I'm going to journal. I do journal. And it's like, you know, dear diary <laughs> yesterday I had the, you know, I'll journal. And, and I do that from, a, again, this is, you know, talking about intention, right? I do that to align myself, to just get my, my synapses firing. So I do something physical 
and then I do something right just intentional i'm putting something out there i'm creating something i'm putting pen to paper and i'm just you know making sure that i'm aligned with my day with what happened yesterday with where i am now and then where i tend my day to go and then another 10 15 minutes um again depending on what i'm budgeting my time for you mentioned podcasts i'm either reading or i'm listening to some uh, an audio book uh listening to a podcast so i try to hit those three different buckets if you will as far as my intention goes so and i i look at that as a that's my morning routine if and when i have the time like i said three four days out of the week i'll have time to do that but if i don't get that routine done it kind of throws me off a little bit to where now if i don't have time to journal or if i don't get my daily my my movement strategies down then i'm a little off now i'm kind of chasing that's like now when do i have time to move like you know (laughs) If I end one training session at 8.50 and my next one starts at 9 o'clock, okay, I'm, I'm going to try and get five, seven minutes of some kind of movement so I can check off. So now it's almost like a, you know, I'm almost like obsessed, you know, obsessive compulsive with, okay, if I didn't get that right. But then if I get it all done, then everything else is humming. And that's that's the routine that sets me up for the day. That's my intentional routine that's mm-hmm. up to, for the day. Well, and I think too, you know, it's important to have a good a good morning routine and these are things that you're going to do that's going to benefit you it's going to benefit you you know mind body um you know we talk really a lot about the importance of having that and so when you're talking about your intentional routine what do you want to do and you're trying to do this with little cognitive effort that's because you want to do it it's the things that excite you that get you motivated And, you know, that sometimes is very hard. It's very hard for someone like me that's always 90 to nothing. I'm always on the go. I have this laundry list of things to do. Here are all my sticky notes of things that have to get done today. And those are just like my daily tasks. And so I do those because I have to. But then it was interesting because when you start diving down into routines, I was listening and and looking at a lot of things when they were talking about automatic routines where you get zoned out. You know, how many times have you been in your car and you're going to work? It's your daily routine (laughs) and you're driving the same there and back, especially in Atlanta traffic or, Uh you know, any of you guys that sit in traffic in California um, and you're just zoned out because it's like something that you have to do. And then it was like, well, how do you break some of that? And obviously you still have to go to work. But it was interesting to see that there was different tasks that people were saying, what can you do to automate your life to give you more time for the intentional routine that you need in order to kind of downregulate overactivity stimulation in your brain to put you in a good mind and, and body you know, place? And I found that interesting because, you know, if you own your own business, what can you do to automate it? You know, what can you do to you know, try to find more time, you know, that's healthy for you. And it's only do emails at certain points a day, set calendar reminders. You know, what can you do to maybe if, if, if you do on your own business, are there other people that you can give certain tasks to because they're just, you know, they're mind dumbing, if you will, to yourself, that it could be something that's important to someone else. And I was like, you know what? I never really thought about that because there are a lot of things that I do where I need to be shutting down and thinking about my particular healthy routine Um, that I do just because I I don't sometimes put different, you know, tasks in a calendar and only spend certain times doing that. And I was like, huh, you know, you've got to be able to automate it. You got to check it. You got to do the research. There's a lot of apps out there that can help you, you know, automate certain things in your life that you didn't really know were available. And then you have to reevaluate it, you know, test it and see, is this something that you feel comfortable letting go? And then establishing a good routine in the gym, at home, you know, and then for yourself personally. Yeah. Have you, so you, you mentioned your commute and, and all those are great points regarding uh, things that are automated. You ever, you ever go on your commute and you find yourself at work, Wendy, and then you're like, did I close the garage door? Always, (laughs) Always, <laughs> always, because again, I move so oh, fast yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I mean, and my husband and I do this together. Sometimes we're running to practice for my 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 little guy, mm-hmm. and we're throwing everything in the car. We're getting him buckled in, and you know, we're both going. And and okay, we got the catcher's bag. We've got the balls. We've got everything that we need to do. Obviously, we're going to baseball practice, and then we're like three streets away, and he's like, "Did you close the garage?" And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Did I press the button? I I don't remember. And then we turn yeah. around and drive back by. 
just to see, you know, and it's not like we think someone's going to steal something. It's more, I don't want like a squirrel in my garage. Like I don't want an animal right. in there. You know? so, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and that's, and that's, that's how automated you can be like for me, because, you know, I don't have one of those automated front door locks, you know, I'll walk away. I'm like, you know, I'm going, I'm walking the dog and I'm like, did I lock the door? You know, did I, did I do that whole thing? Um, or, you know, the garage, did I, did I lock? Cause you, you're, you do it. So many, the repetitions are there. The brain, again, the brain doesn't like to spend energy on things that it doesn't have to. So things that are unconscious or subconscious to where you do it automatically. Cause the brain, that, and that's why the whole automation thing, Wendy, right. It's, mm -hmm. it's just your brain trying to save energy. It makes it easy. It's stress-free, right? That's why when we create a new routine and we're, when we're doing it, we're in it, we're in the mode, you know, you, you, your, your brain gets, okay, this is what we're doing. This, this is the sequence of events that we're doing. Right. And, and it does that because, you know, you're automated because it's, it's saying, okay, I'm streamlining this process because it takes so little energy. I can save my energy for, for something or anything else. So when we're talking about routines here on random fit with both Wendy Bats and I, Ken Miller talking about routines, not, you know, the not so life hack, hack it is about looking at sequence of events getting yourself in a mode um, of being able to do something that's easy effortless but again with the not so life hack hack it's 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 not one thing it's a series of things it could be two three things strung together that help improve life so so again back to the the, the original one of the original reasons why we're talking about this is that when we talk to our clients and we look at okay, what are some of the routines that are going to help you move better, feel better, perform better? You know, because it is such a change, and we talk about the brain saving energy, change takes energy, change is stressful. So one of the, so what we were talking about earlier, Wendy, is, is how do you make that change? How do you integrate something that's going to help you? Now, now that you've learned what to do better, right? What can impact your life? Now comes the other side of the coin on how do I now, how do I do that thing that's better when this is my routine now I'm adding something into or possibly adding something new and taking away something that now we know because you've been educated that can, you know, that can be taking away from your goals of, of looking, feeling and performing better. So that takes energy that can be stressful. This is where we start to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which now that's your fight or flight, right? Um, but once you find a way to integrate a new habit, like let's just do, you know, three yoga poses in the morning before we take a shower, if you're a morning shower person, right? Uh, you know, so that might sit, start off with, why don't we do one pose, right, today, and we do that three days in a row, let's add a second pose, do that for a few days, and then we'll add the third pose, right, and then get in that routine, add that into your, you know, before, before I step two feet away from my, my bed, this is what I'm going to do before I do the next thing. So adding these little hacks, if you will, into your lifestyle, into your routine, your new routine, right? Just do what you can to alleviate some of the stressful things. Because I think a lot of people, they easily get into that, that phase or that mentality of overwhelm, right? There's so many good things I need to do and I need to do them all. Well, no, you don't. If you just do a little bit now, add a little bit later, add a little bit later, anything to alleviate some of that, that that stress response, that that that, and possibly that feeling of overwhelm, is what's going to help you build in that that little bit of routine, right? That little component of that new routine, to where now you're going to look, feel, perform better. Yeah, I mean, and you know, guys, we have routines in everything that we do. You know, I know mm -hmm. Ken and I, we train the same because we have the same methodology utilizing the NASM OPT model. And the first thing we'll tell our clients to do, unless there's some contraindication, is we'll say, hey, we want you to hop on a foam roller. And the clients have this as homework. They have this to do every single day. They come in, they foam roll. We give specific stretches. 
we do some core, we do some balance, we do some plyometric work just to, you know, warm up the body. And then we go into the actual independent muscles or, you know, individual muscles to get the workout done. So that is a routine that we see based on science makes sense to warm up the body correctly, to activate it correctly, to therefore produce the greatest amount of force, utilizing really good um, range of motion and feedback for whatever um, weight we're placing on specific muscles. And then we do a cool down. We do that in the gym. We need to be doing that in life. And I think that's kind of one right. of the points we wanted to make today on this episode of Random Fit about routines with Ken Miller and myself, Wendy Batts, was really think about what can you do in your morning. And I know for myself, I have a specific routine. I wake up every morning. The first thing I do is I go straight into the shower. That's what wakes me up. I get ready. I go down I make a cup of coffee. And then it's like I start my day rolling. I also sit and make you know a list of tasks of things that I have to do. And because I can't remember things anymore, I have to write them on a sticky note and then I constantly am crossing things off. But, you know, even when you're talking to performance, you know, um, coaches or you're talking to high level athletes, they have a routine. They have a routine mm -hmm. before they go out and play. You know, there's certain superstition things that will go into a routine to prepare someone when they're getting ready. Like left sock has to go on before the right sock. And, the, you know, they have to have this particular undershirt that goes over their, you know, underneath with their jersey on top and it has to be layered certain ways there are very healthy routines that i think is is something that just makes us feel better so therefore we are going to perform at a higher level but if you notice that there are certain things that you're missing and this is where you have to kind of do a self-analysis of what do you need to do to better your daily routine to make you have a healthier you know lifestyle journey that's where you need to find i mean ken and i can talk about our own things that we know we're lacking and we need to find more time for but then the more that you consciously make it and what we've read about, what we've researched for this, the more that you constantly co yeah, intentionally do it in your daily activity, then it becomes automatic. And it's just part of it in order to get you through the day more successfully than you may be at right now. Right. And and I think the other part about setting a, a routine and if we're going to talk specifically about what you might do in the morning um the the bookend to that is okay well what are you doing at night because mm -hmm. if if i set myself up right in the evening right so my bed my quote unquote bedtime routine or or something it might actually be kind of strong overlay with sleep hygiene right so you have the three two one right um don't eat three hours before you go to bed turn off all blue light blue uh you know screen exposure two hours before bed and you want to be able to, you know, do something light, um, like reading a magazine an hour before. But you know, whatever that might be for you, everybody's different. Um, I just noticed for me with my night, the better my nighttime routine is, mm -hmm. the easier it is for me to get a good night's sleep. And then, therefore, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not tired. I'm not feeling like I need another hours of sleep, which makes my now my morning routine that much easier so just know that there can be some overlapping of how one routine can affect another routine and you can even take the the other the the other approach to this like well my morning routine can now set me up for having a better day and a day where i'm spending my energy properly correctly efficiently so that by the time i'm ready for my 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 nighttime routine i am ready to go to bed Right. Yeah. I'm, you know, so if I wake up, I get out, you know, do my my three things. I, I I do my movement. I do my my journaling. I do my learning, listening. Those are my three things. Forty five to 60 minutes of that. And then if the daytime is right, it's still not dark out. I try <laughs> to get some of that early day, early light exposure. Right. Mm -hmm. So 10, 10, 15 minutes of that. Just, you know, let the sun hit your face. Don't look directly into the sun. Right. And use sunscreen. That, and use sunscreen, right? <laughs> but that's equivalent of being outside and getting that vitamin D, that sun exposure for two, three hours of afternoon sun. So if I can, if I can take that life hack, if I can turn 15 minutes to be as effective as two to three hours, I'll take that. But if if I do that properly, my mind's in the right space throughout the day. And then I am ready to, sh you know, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm laying in bed. I'm having trouble sleeping. No, if I, if I have a good, full, productive day for myself, professionally, uh, for my family, 
uh, socially with friends, then I'm going to have an easier time getting to bed and having a deeper sleep. And those are things that I've observed since I started monitoring sleep with <laughs> my, yeah, all of my, so my recovery, my sleep and all that. Once you have a chance to start looking at how that affects you both conscious and unconscious when you're sleeping, then you'll start to see that a routine morning can affect the evening and vice versa evening affecting the morning. So just know that how you sequence your, your daily routines can affect and, and have a, you know, a beneficial effect on what you do for another part of your day. Well, two things to what you said. So I've been tracking my stuff as well. Ken and I hold each other accountable just so you guys know. And, um, you know, I, I work certain events sometimes that the hours are a little crazy. And, you know, when I'm looking at this, I have normal routines. And when you get out of a routine, that's not your norm. I was looking at the data and it was like, mm -hmm. red line, pay attention, pay attention. Yeah. Like in my sleep, my, I mean, latency to sleep, the uh, deep sleep, everything was like redlined because I got out of something that my body was accustomed to. And those of you guys that really don't think about how important routines are, if you've ever been a parent or if you're looking to be a parent, here's a prime example of why routines are important. Once you start having a baby, you want to put them on a very specific schedule. It's their routine. Their nap time is a certain routine. Their bedtime needs to be a certain routine. You know, the bath time before the bed and the reading and all the things that you do as a parent when something happens and that routine gets out of whack, the kid goes nuts and it's like they can't sleep. They're crying. Their witching hour is a totally different hour. Like it is a disaster. And so having routines in life is actually something that your body needs. And it's very important to you're feeling it with positive stuff, Ken, um, because there's yeah. a lot of bad things that will happen if you get out of your routine. But sometimes, like I said, and, and I think this is my takeaway, if you will, have positive routines. And if you notice that there's something in there that's causing a lot of anxiety and stress, and like you said, is, is overwhelming, what can you do to change it? Are there ways to automate something? And then at that point, you can take it from there. Yeah. And, and just know that, you know, whether you're picking up new habits or, you know, let's say tools and tricks of, okay, you know, what are these hacks that I can do? It's like, yeah, these things, great. Where are you going to put it? Right. Yeah. And are you going to do it in the morning? Are you doing it in the evening? Uh, is it the first part of your morning? What time are you going to do it? Um, so that's why we say it's not so life hack hack because it's like you may you might see one thing that you know might turn your world uh, you know upside down for the better, but <laughs> when when are you going to do it? So that's mm -hmm. where you can take these single single behaviors. You have to put it you know, what we call layering, right? You want to layer one good behavior on top of another because, you know, this is where the sum is is actually more impactful um, than, than the pieces, right? So things can magnify once they are combined with other things. So when we talk about routines, this is what we're talking about. And take it little by little, right? Little by little, make it a stress free nothing's really stress free but <laughs> as as low as stressful a situation as you can and this start small and you'll eventually get to the point where it's like it's unconscious it's 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 true definition of routine where you're not really thinking about it but you are reaping all the benefits because hey like you're doing it there's you know you're you're relaxed about it it's it's just what you do it's who you are it's what makes you you know who you are in the day so well and another thing too really quick um can that's why people practice i mean think about like you know when you've got dancers or choreographers and they're going and doing these things on stage and you're going to watch a concert these yeah. guys have to practice so um, you know like when they get out there it is just something that flows because they have done it so much that it's a routine that they already know for that particular song or whatever. So another yeah. way of thinking about it is it, it takes practice. And so, right. you know, practicing positive things for that routine is going to really help you make those things a habit where multiple habits are now the routine of something that you don't have to think as much about. Yep. And, and something that I've learned this year is like, you know, when it comes to incorporating things that make you better, um, you know, whatever the situation may be, whether it's how to throw a ball or, you know, dance routine, like you're mentioning, Wendy, some people do it. Some people practice until they get it right. 
but the real professionals, the people that are really good at it, they practice until they can't get it wrong, right? Yep. So they're always fine tuning things, doing what they can to, to, you know, see what fits into their life. Because like I was saying, you can read, you can learn something. Um, and that's how that writer or that author or that speaker did it for themselves. But just know that it's okay if it doesn't fit their template. You've got your own template to fill out when it comes to creating behaviors and, and habits, routines that are right for you. So the as always, of life. Life. the template <laughs> of life. Yeah, exactly. That's We're always trying to search for that, right? right. <laughs> so, hey, for those of you listening to us here on Random Fit, thank you for listening to this episode of Randy Fit. Of Randy, Randy Fit. Who's Randy Fit? <laughs> Random fit with both Wendy Bats and I myself, Ken Miller, on this episode of Routines, the not so life hack hack. Uh, if you like what we talked about today, like, follow, subscribe, download, share, and more importantly, comment. Let us know what you want us to talk about, and we will be sure to do what we can to get that on Random Fit for you. So until next time, everybody, take care and be well.